that's our old covenant. That's our Old Testament example. We'll turn to Mark chapter 3. I'd like to give two examples. Usually one out of the Old Covenant, one out of the New Covenant. Mark chapter 3, 13 through 15. Just a few verses of scripture. We're still talking about purpose by design. Mark chapter 3, 13 says, And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him, 14, and he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, and that, that, and that he might send them forth to preach, 15, and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Okay? In the, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, we deal with the fact that before he formed thee, he knew thee, and he sanctified you, he set you apart, he ordained you, he gave you priestly authority. Some people wait for somebody to, to oh, hey, I want you to come up before the church, I want you to, to get on your knees. It amazes me. I, I've known people, and I ain't busting nobody out, but this is what it is, and we need to reveal this nonsense so we can get back on our purpose by design. We have people that go to these so-called quote-unquote famous or popular churches so they can get in position so they can let people know that, well, I, was, I went to this college and I was ordained by this pastor. Let me tell you what God said. If God ain't good enough, if Jesus ain't good enough, you ain't going to never have the faith to do anything. He said, I set you apart, he sanctified you in the womb. He said, I gave you priestly authority in the womb. He said that you should go. He gave you a mandate. And that's what's going on right here and right now. In Mark 3.13, he says, And he goeth up into the mountain, and calleth unto him, he called to him who he would, and they came unto him. So how do you know if you're called and chosen? God calls you, and you go. For many are called, but few are chosen. In Matthew 22.14, he calls many. He calls many. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. It, the churches are packed with thousands and thousands and maybe millions and millions. You're all called. You're all called. Everybody's called. How do you know who's chosen? The ones that's willing to go. Go do what? 14. And he ordained 12. He ordained 12. That's very key. Jesus ordained 12. I don't read nowhere in my Bible or any of the Gospels where there was some ceremony where he stood them all up and he gave them this piece of paper saying, now go out and start your church and start marrying people. He ordained them. What's that mean? He gave them priestly authority. Authority over what? Wickedness in high places. And we're about to read that in the next scripture. That's what he ordained them to do. It amazes me. People be like, well, yeah, I'm ordained now. Ordained to do what? Well, I can marry people. And what's your point? A, a judge can, can marry people. A, a ship's captain can marry people. Homosexuals can go online and get a... And get a uh, a license to marry people, just because you go on, just because you go on the internet or you go to some church and they license you, does not mean you're ordained. That doesn't mean you're ordained. Ordained means priestly authority. You've been given priestly authority, and you know those who have priestly authority because they walk by faith and not by sight. Priestly authority has nothing to do with having a license. Well, I'm gonna leave that church, man. They they don't ordain women, or they don't ordain this, or they don't ordain that. What in the world that got to do with anything? The Bible says in Jeremiah that you that was done by birth. And as soon as, as soon as you can receive it, you can start walking in it. So verse 13 says, He calleth those. He goeth up to a mountain and he calleth unto whom he would, and they came unto him. He called them and they came. You know how many people, the phone just rang here. You know how many people get called? And they don't answer, I can name at least 10, 15 people right now who I know God has called. And they won't answer their calling. Well, you know, me and my wife, we just got married, and once I get settled, I may go see what God want me to do for him. Do you hear the words that's coming out of your mouth? Well, once, you know, once I once I get my retirement and I got a little money, then I start ministry, because then I can afford to do it. Do you hear the words that's coming out of your mouth? But once I get a little older, and I realize there's an eight-year-old king in Israel back in the day, once I get a little older, uh, I may, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do what God has called me to do. Do you hear the words that's coming out of your mouth? Many are called, but few are chosen. 
Verse 14, what did he call them to do? And he ordained 12 that they should be with him. Now be with him. And that he might send them forth to preach. You had to be with Jesus. And then he would give you your mandate. Mandate, which means that he would officially order or give you a commission to do something. What's that mean? That means you. this is when you sit. You sit your butt still in church until you get your mandate. Not until you can preach. Not until you can sing. Not until you think you're anointed. Not until you think you should start a church or a ministry. You sit there until you get your mandate from who? Jesus. God. God will tell you when it's time for you to go. You don't tell yourself. That's why some people's purpose is so messed up. I know cats who start and stop churches every year. Oh, I'm starting my church back up, Doc. I'm like, good Lord. I, I tell people all the time, I will be a fool for Christ all day long. Hey, man, I don't even understand why you still got church going on. You ain't got that many folk. What's that got to do with my mandate and my obedience to God? Nothing. That's two separate things. I know my purpose, and I know my purpose by design. If I had quit, I had never known nothing about no internet. I, I would have stopped. If I had stopped when people stopped uh, adhering to the fellowship, so-called, I wouldn't be doing my mandate. I wouldn't be here preaching right now. And I know for a fact that I bear fruit from this internet ministry because no, no sooner than it's uploaded, I'm getting calls and emails. I can't get it uploaded fast enough before I'm getting calls and emails from people worldwide, from family members that can't be in a state and come to this, come through my ministry. That's, that's my mandate. That's what he commissioned me to do. But if I hadn't kept walking by faith, looking at counting, looking at counting people, trying to figure out how I'm going to pay bills, I would have never, ever walked in the obedience of God and understood that he set me apart and he gave me priestly authority. The devil want to steal your purpose based off of what you see with your natural eye. But you can't look with your natural eye. You got to look at what the spirit man is saying. And I love when people say this nonsense. Well, uh, the Lord told me. Oh, I guess he changed his mind. Because when I met you, you told me the Lord said this. So now you're saying the Lord said that. Who's the Lord? Because the God I serve is not double-minded. He don't say this on, on, your, on your good days and then say this on your bad days. We have to be mature enough to know when God is speaking and we we're, we're allowing our flesh and the situation and emotions to speak and bring those things under subjection. The Bible says cast down stuff. So God, he formed you, he set you apart, he gave you priestly authority, and then he gave you a mandate and told you to go. But according to the word of the living God, you don't go until God tell you to go. That's when you go. Verse 13, and he goes to the body and called them whom... 14, and he ordained 12 that they should be with him, be with Jesus, and that he might that he might send them forth to preach. That's what he sent them forth to do. He sent them forth to preach. Now, I, I'm not going to sit here because God ain't told me to do it. I'm not going to sit here and talk about all these various different kinds of ministries because God can use anything and everything to save a person. But all I know is right here, he said he sent them forth to preach. Like I said before, people tell me, well, I ain't been called to preach. They quick to say that. I ain't been called to preach. Wow. All I'm going to say is that whatever you've been called to do, it needs to fall under Genesis and Revelation. It needs to be in this word. You're only protected. You, 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 the covenant is in the, in the Bible. So whatever it is you claim that God calls you to do, it needs to be within the confines of this Bible. You can't mysteriously just make up some, some homemade ministry Hey, y'all, I want y'all to drink this magic Kool-Aid, and we all going to be in heaven. Soon somebody starts speaking and trying to get you to do something in the Bible, you better kick rocks. You better go. Why, why, soon, when they're in the volume of the book, you cool. If they start making up their own scriptures and stuff, you better bounce. That's not God's purpose and design for you. So he ordained 12 that they should be with him, and then he was he would give them a mandate tell them to go. 15. This is what he gave him. He says to send them forth and preach, the 14. And 15 says, and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. So he gave them a mandate to go, preach the gospel, and he commissioned them and told them to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. I don't hear too many people saying, yeah, I've been called to heal sickness and to cast out devils. You don't hear that kind of stuff no more. Oh, I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. We are so cliche-ish and trendish in the church. 
We are. We, we, get, we jump on trends or we jump on cliches. Uh, I'm, I'm a worshiper. What does that mean? People dying left, right, behind us, side to side. I'm a worshiper. What have you been called to do? Put it to the test. I ain't asking you to start no fights. That may not be what you called to do. Put it to the test. Next time somebody say something to you, ask them, what are you called to do? What did God call you to do? Don't, you ain't got to be mean or evil or disgruntled. It, it's a curious thing. You know, ask somebody who's been going to church for a long time, what have you been called to do? They say, I've been called to sit here in this pew. I'm like, well, I don't see that in the Bible. And with all due respect, I don't see that here. The Bible says sheep be got sheep. There are people that I'm going to win that you can't win, and vice versa. But you ain't going to win them sitting there looking simple. You ain't going to win them not doing what God has called you to do, your purpose. It's just not going to happen. He has a formula that's perfect. God's ways are perfect. They are not going to fail. We fail God. God don't fail us. I feel led to reiterate this before. I got some more scriptures, but I'm not going to get into it to a lot of these scriptures. But like I did, said what I was supposed to say, it says uh, that I want to reiterate this again in Jeremiah because I feel like some people just don't understand. The word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before. Before any sickness, before any disease, before any marital problems, before any bills, before any credit problems, before you got a job, before you got a car, before you got a car accident, before everything. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God knows you. He knows you. He knows your purpose. He knows what the things that he has to put together to bring you to where he wants you to go. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And as we, as we begin to prepare for another year, I want you to get an understanding of why and what your purpose is. There, that's, that is a huge, huge, huge thing. People making all these fleshly uh, resolutions. and I want this this year and I want that this year. How about you get on your face and say, I want God to reveal to me, if, if, if you don't know, just in case you don't know what my purpose is for him. Just take some time before you get all into your flesh, desiring things in the world. I want God to reveal to me what my purpose is. 1 Kings 5.5 5 says, And behold, I purpose to build in a house unto the name of the Lord, my God. As the Lord spake unto David, my father, saying, Thy son, whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build a house unto my name. He was purposed to build a house for God. That was in 1 Kings 5.5. 5. There's a purpose. You have a purpose. Some people are purposed to be at a ministry or be in a church to help build that house. That is your purpose. So you need to know what your purpose is. You can't, you can't let me... You can't tell, let nobody else really tell you what your purpose is. God gave you that purpose. So you need to understand what God is telling you to do with that purpose. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Ain't nothing worse than seeing people do stuff out of season. That is the most goofiest thing in the world. You know, for example, I see this silly example in my head. Somebody buy, a, uh, they get a fur coat and they head on the layaway and they finally get it out, but it's summertime. But because the, the, the fur coat is so nice, even though it's 99 degrees outside, they want to wear their fur coat because it took them so long to get it out. They put it in layaway in the wintertime, but because of some money problems, it sat in there. So they finally got it out and it's so sweet, they just got to wear it. So they get it, come down the street in the summertime, 99 degree weather, in a fur coat sweating. Like, man, ain't you hot? Like, yeah, but I just, you out of season. <laughs> you look silly. 
That's how we look when we do stuff out of season. God has a purpose. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So how do I know you love God? Because you're doing what his purpose is. I tell people all the time, yeah, you know I love God because I'm dealing with you. That's how I show my love towards God because I do what he can't do. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, which is in heaven. So I'm down here doing his work. So when you deal with people who you wouldn't necessarily deal with, unless you love God, that's how you show God you love him. Because it's, it's, it's his purpose that you share the gospel with people. Now, it, it, it ain't always a pleasant thing. We've had people reject us. I don't want to hear that. I have people treat me real bad sometimes with the truck. They, they, they make it real clear. I ain't thinking about that Jesus stuff. Why didn't Jesus let them kids get shot? Dude, you can blame Jesus all you want to. Now I'd explain to them and try to win them to the gospel, not to try to explain to them about, you know, them kids getting shot, but the fact that I got to give them the hope that's in me. That no, uh, God didn't do that. Jesus didn't do that. Man did that. Because somebody didn't understand their purpose, and so they, they decided to make up their own purpose. Romans 9-11 says, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. God called you. Since God called you, and since he, before, he knew you before you was in there, he gave you your purpose. He sanctified you. Take it to God. Lead the bishops, the pastors, the apostles, the prophets, and teachers alone. I got a question. What am I called to do? Get on your face and find out yourself what you've been called to do. That's it. That's it. People be, well, the pastor told me, the pastor told me, the pastor told me. Get on your face. The veil was rent from top to bottom. You need to know yourself what God is calling you to do. They should be confirming what God has told you. They shouldn't be the first voice. They should be the confirmation voice. There's a religion down here that, 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 do, that do confirmations. That's what they call it. They've been confirmed. Well, where do you think they got that from? The confirmation comes from me preaching this word I've been preaching, and God's already been dealing with you according to this word. There ain't no accident you watching this or you're listening to this. Like I said, nothing happens by accidents or happenstance. What it is is God is confirming what he's already been dealing with you on, if you have a relationship with you, with him. I use the example all the time. If you head to Cleveland, you need to be going 71 North. If you're not going 71 North, you get off at the gas station and you ask the man how to get to Cleveland, he said, oh, you need to go turn around. You're going the wrong direction. That's, that's what preachers and people of God are called to do generally. They're called to, to keep you on your purpose by your design. Now, I will say this also. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you don't know him for yourself and a part of your sins, you will go for every wind of doctrine. Every time somebody will walk up to you to sound like they're talking better than the last guy, you're going to start following them. I am not a big fan of a TV church. I'm not. I know people that do that. Well, I don't go to church. I just, I just watch TV. Uh, your legs broke. Your car broke. Your butt broke. What part of go don't you understand? Part of The Bible says forsake not the assembly. You need to go. That's a, that's a part of activating your faith. So what they get on your nerves? So what you don't want to be in crowds? You got a phobia about being in crowds or even a phobia about leaving your house. That's what the problem is. That devil like that. He got you on the disobedience part of going before you even get started. But I bet you go to the grocery store, don't you? When you want some natural food, you go to the grocery store. Or when your car needs some gas or you want some money, you go to the bank. So why can't you go to church? 2 Timothy 1.9 says, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So before the world began, he was given a purpose, his own purpose. He had a purpose for you. God is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. In other words, you have a birth date and you have an exit date. And the only thing you can control by your obedience is that little slash mark in the middle. That's the only thing you can control. 
Some people don't last as long as others. You have a birth date, which you could, could not control, and you have an exit date, which you can't control unless you take your own life. But the only thing that you can control in obedience or disobedience is that little slash mark. Who have saved us and called us with a holy calling. What's holy mean? Holy means separate. Not according to our works. He didn't give you a calling according to your works. Well, I was this when I was in the world, so I'm going to do that now. You need to find out what God desires for you to do. Well, I'm good at this, so I want to do that. There ain't nothing holy about that. There ain't nothing... That, 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 that's just what you want to do. I want to be a professional football player. I want to be a professional boxer. People are like, well, can't you do that and preach the gospel? No. Because last time I checked, when you play football, you got to submit yourself to those who have rule over you. You can't just tell that man you want to stop playing football and not come to practice because you want to study your word. Or God's called you on a fast and they're having a buffet and you got to eat. Got a boxing match coming up. And I can't just say, well, I ain't coming. I already didn't sign the contract for money. I ain't coming because I'm on a fast. No, you can't do both. I'm, 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 it, it, that, that time is gone. The earth needs us. They're, they're, they're moaning and groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So the time for you thinking that you can have your cake and eat it too, you're going to do that in Jesus Christ. It's time for you to get to your purpose by design. Who have saved us, called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world begun. Before the world begun. That's another time, before. We said, before I knew thee in, the, in your, your mom's womb, before. All this stuff was before. You know why I believe in my heart God did it before? So you couldn't use the world and the circumstances of the world as an excuse not to do what God has called you to do. He said, before. He already got you ready to go, before. Last, got one more scripture, 1 John 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. He that committeth sin is of the devil. That's what the Bible says. He that committeth sin is of the devil. We don't like calling Christians the devil or they're of the devil. We don't like, that's, that's not nice. It's not nice that when people commit sins, they're of the devil. I saw a gay dude on a, um, a show last night on TV, and I tried so, so hard not to prejudge. You know, I saw the guy, and he was on the show, and he was talking, and before he even admitted who he was or what he was, his voice was real high, and I thought to myself, as because I got a, a comedy character, I thought to myself, why do they have to, what, what, okay, you gay, why does your voice got to be so high and squeaky? I'm like, okay, you, you, you gay, you choose to be gay, homosexual, what happened to your voice? Do you change your vocal cords? Let me get back on my subject. But anyway, he, he, he said, look, I've chosen this lifestyle. This is what I chose to do. He said there boldly on the show, I'm gay and I've been an outcast my whole life because I chose to be gay. And what you're saying when you say you were gay, I'm going to make it plain because I'm tired of people tiptoeing around this issue. Because when I was a heathen and a wretch undone, people called me a sinner and I was a sinner because I was sleeping with every girl that walked past my face. So why is it different with gay people? You choose to sleep with a guy or if you're a woman, you choose to sleep with a woman. The Bible calls it a sin. It's a sin. We call a spade a spade. We call it, if it quack like a duck, look like a duck, walk like a duck, eat crackers like a duck, it's a duck. So if you commit sin, the Bible says uh, uh, right here in the scripture that, that where it goes, hide from me, nine, 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 nine. <laughs> Lost my place. Three, eight. He that committed sin is of the devil, period. If you commit sin, you're of the devil. That is not your purpose. The says, For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. God who was in heaven manifested himself through Mary, virgin birth, came down to earth, walked as Jesus, to take sin away. Because before Jesus came, there was no way for man to overcome sin. There was no way for us to be atoned for the sins that we was committing. 
there was no opportunity for us to go to heaven. That's why there's no excuse for anybody now, because Jesus was born of a virgin. Jesus walked on the earth for 33 years. He allowed them to crucify him and kill him. His blood came streaming down. He was put in a tomb for three days. And he came out and he rose like he said he would. And because he rose, the Bible says he rose with all power. That power gave us purpose. That purpose gave us a design. That design gives us a life and a mandate to go and do what he called us to do. It says, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus already destroyed the works of the devil. So all you have to do is do what God has called you to do. All these wars and battles and things that we fight, and you just heard me speak on homosexuals and gays, that sin ain't no bigger than any other sin. Yes, yeah, an abomination for a man to be for a man or a woman to be for a woman. It's an abomination, but sin is sin. Your, your sin, if you're gay and you're homosexual and you're watching, your sin is not greater than anybody else's sin. We all need Jesus. And I will say this, before... You was, you was even brought on earth. I don't care what, what, what circumstances brought you here. I don't care if it was your mother and your cousin, your mom's cousin. You are here. God knew what he was doing. God is bigger. See, we have a finite mind. Our mind is finite. We only think within the confines of what we've been taught. It's almost like a computer sometimes. We only allow ourselves to think in the box of the hard drive, which is in our brain.